China claims to be making steady progress on its sixth-generation fighter jet, possibly tilting the Pacific air balance of power in its favor vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. if it fails to keep pace with its competitor program. While there is no universally agreed definition of what constitutes a sixth-generation fighter, the type will likely feature advanced and emerging technologies, such as modular design, machine learning, artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality, drone swarms, and optionally manned capability. A September article from Air and Space Forces magazine mentions that China is working hard to develop its sixth-generation fighter as a response to the highly classified U.S. next-generation air dominance NGAD program, with Chinese efforts mirroring the same systems-of-systems -systems approach of the U.S. Air Force, says General Mark Kelly, head of the Force's Air Combat Command ACC, ACC. At the annual U.S. Air Force Air, Space and Cyber Conference this September, Kelly noted that China sees sixth-generation air dominance as featuring exponential increases in signature reduction, the exponential acceleration of processing power and sensing capabilities, the ability to iterate improvements using open mission systems, and reprogram at the speed of relevance. Kelly asserted an extremely tight U.S. lead in sixth-generation fighter development, suggesting that the U.S. may acquire sixth-generation air dominance barely a month before its opponents underlining China's dedicated effort on acquiring these same capabilities. He also emphasized China's progressive approach to its fighter program, comparing it with the leapfrogging strategy adopted by the U.S. In a September piece for the war zone, Thomas Nudik highlighted that China had already bought Su-27 heavyweight fighters from Russia and utilized those jets to create its better copy. He claimed China's initial procurement of the Su-27 from Russia allowed it to develop upgraded J-15 and J-16 clones. Furthermore, China's purchase of the Su-35 has provided it insights into fifth-generation technology, such as thrust vectoring engines, electronic warfare systems, and weaponry. As such, it is conceivable that China may employ its own J-25 generation fighter as a technical foundation for its sixth-generation fighter. In addition, Asia Times has previously speculated that the J-20 might in the future be updated with technology present in sixth-generation fighters like as directed energy weaponry or optionally manned capabilities. However, China's efforts to do so may be limited by its handicaps in producing jet engines, with Chinese models apparently suffering from short lifespans and low power output. As a result, China presently relies on Russian engines for its J-20 fighters, a vulnerable technical and supply chain gap in one of its most modern combat aircraft. However, China may be close to fixing its jet engine issues. In March 2022, South China Morning Post stated that China's J-20 had been tested with the new Douyin S-15 afterburning turbofan engine, boosting its mobility and combat capability. The story also indicated that China will replace all Russian AL-31F engines installed to J-20s, with local Douyin S-15 engines, which may signal China's growing confidence in its jet engine metallurgy and manufacturing capabilities. Kelly observes that this deploy strategy might give China an easier transition from fifth to sixth generation fighters. In contrast, US and UK sixth generation fighter projects aspire to outpace China and Russia's fifth generation aircraft. In a July 2022 article for 1945, UK Air Chief Marshal Michael Wigston notes that his country is taking a revolutionary approach by looking at a game-changing mix of swarming drones, unmanned aircraft and a next-gen manned platform. He emphasizes that the UK's sixth-generation fighter program emphasizes weapons, battle space connectivity, and how information is moved through the network. But in the same article, Brent Eastwood takes a skeptical view of sixth-generation fighters, asking if they are even necessary for modern warfare. He notes that the F-35 is already an international program and that its capabilities may preclude the need for a sixth-generation fighter. He cites the case of Israel, pointing out that its F-35s give it air dominance over the Middle East, including against potential adversaries like Turkey and Saudi Arabia, which operate Western fighters such as the Eurofighter Typhoon, F-15, and F-16. However, the capabilities of these fourth-generation Western fighters are known in tests against the F-35, in contrast to those of China, whose fighters' capabilities remain largely unknown save for its low-end export models, which represent the cream of its crop. Eastwood also mentions that despite a plethora of sixth-generation fighter concepts, 
such aircraft may offer only marginal improvements to fifth-generation fighters despite their massive price tags. He also notes that U.S. fifth-generation fighters, such as the F-35, are perhaps already sufficient to achieve air superiority, and it would be wiser to purchase more such airframes instead of developing an all-new sixth-generation fighter. As such, the U.S. remains confident in its leading position in fighter technology. In a September article in the War Zone, U.S. Air Force Head of Pacific Forces General Kenneth Wilsbach stated that China's growing fleet of J-20 fighters is not anything to lose sleep over. He also highlighted that the U.S. regularly examines how China utilizes its J-20 fighters. Similarly, U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff General Charles Brown discounted China's J-20. He added that the U.S. had opportunities to monitor the type in close encounters with F-35s in the East China Sea, emphasizing the excellent command and control connected with the J-20. However, he underlined that while the U.S. learned a lot from these encounters, the J-20's capabilities were nothing he would worry too much about. Despite Brown and Kenneth downplaying the J-20, the report states China's gains in air-to-air -air missiles were a worry for the U.S., driving attempts to create its AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile JTM. JTM. Furthermore, Brown underlined that if the U.S. continues to work on its NGAD program, it would be able to preserve its air power superiority over China. However, even if the U.S. succeeds to launch its NGAD fighter, the balance of air power in the Pacific may already have swung in China's favor. Asia Times has previously reported that U.S. fighter forces in the region are battling with insufficient aircraft numbers, aged airframes, and undertrained pilots, estimating that such a force is unable to sustain conventional deterrence against China. Even if the U.S. chose to expand up fighter manufacturing, speed up the development of next-generation airframes, and hasten pilot training, the U.S. risks mistaking quantity for capabilities. U.S. officials downplaying China's fifth- and sixth-generation programs by basing their hopes on the NGAD project, which is still very much a work in progress, points at a denial of a fighter gap whereby China has perhaps already overtaken U.S. air power in the Pacific.